He didn't speak until he was almost three. His teachers said he was slow, strange, maybe even mentally weak. He was expelled from school, rejected from jobs, ignored by scientists. But this quiet child from Germany would one day change how we see the universe. He never led an army, he never ruled a nation, but his ideas shook the world. He showed us that time isn't fixed, that energy and mass are the same, that imagination is more powerful than knowledge. This is not just the story of a scientist, it's the painful journey of a misunderstood child, a refugee from war, and the mind that helped humanity dream beyond the stars. This is the story of Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was born on March 14, 1879, in Ulm, Germany. His parents, Hermann, an engineer, and Pauline, a pianist, were middle-class Jews. From the beginning, Albert was different. He didn't speak at age one or two. Even by three, he was completely silent. His parents were concerned. Doctors didn't know what to say. Teachers said he was too slow to learn. When he finally did speak, it sounded unusual. He repeated every sentence, word for word. The soup is hot. The soup is hot. I want water. I want water. It wasn't just a habit. It was how his brain worked, slowly, carefully, deeply. He didn't join games. He rarely smiled. He often sat alone, lost in thought. Other kids played. Albert watched, quiet, still, curious. Deep inside that quiet child, a powerful mind was waking up, a mind that never stopped asking questions, a curiosity the world didn't understand yet. And one day, that same quiet boy would change everything. Albert grew up in Munich, where he attended a strict school. There, students were expected to obey, not question. But Albert questioned everything. He refused to memorize facts without meaning. He challenged his teachers, and they didn't like it. One teacher told him, Einstein, you will never amount to anything. At 15, he dropped out of school and joined his family in Italy. Later, he applied to the Swiss Federal Polytechnic in Zurich. He failed the entrance exam, except in science and math. He studied hard, tried again, and got in. But even in college, professors found him rebellious. He skipped classes, taught himself from books, and kept thinking in ways no one else dared. Einstein graduated in 1900, but no university offered him a job. Why? Because he challenged his professors. He skipped lectures, thought for himself, and didn't fit their rules. He was brilliant, but misunderstood. For two years, Einstein searched for work and was rejected everywhere. Finally, in 1902, he got a job at the Swiss Patent Office in Bern. It wasn't a science job. He reviewed inventions, quietly, mechanically. But in his free time, during lunch breaks and late nights, Albert worked on his own scientific ideas. No lab, no money, no support, just a notebook and a dream. In 1905, Albert Einstein was just 26 years old. He was still working quietly in a small office at the Swiss Patent Office. But that year, he published four scientific papers. Each one changed science forever. Today, we call it Annus Mirabilis, the miracle year. So, what did he actually discover? Let's explain it simply. The photoelectric effect. Einstein said something bold. Light isn't just a wave. It's made of tiny energy particles called photons. When light hits certain metals, it can knock out electrons, but only if the light has enough energy, not brightness, energy. This idea proved that light behaves like a particle too, not just a wave. And that changed everything. Thanks to this one discovery, we now have things like solar panels, lasers, remote controls, and even digital cameras 
This is the discovery that won Einstein the Nobel Prize in 1921. Brownian motion. Have you ever seen tiny dust particles floating in water? They move, randomly. Einstein explained why. They're being hit by invisible atoms, moving all the time. At the time, many scientists still doubted atoms were real. Einstein proved them wrong with math and logic. His theory gave scientists the proof they were waiting for. It showed that atoms, the building blocks of everything, are real and active. Special Relativity Einstein said, Time and space are not fixed. They change depending on how fast you're moving. That means if you travel close to the speed of light, time would slow down for you. It sounds like science fiction, but it's real. In fact, your phone's GPS only works because satellites adjust for Einstein's theory. Without him, Google Maps would be wrong. E equals mc squared. This is the most famous equation in the world. E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. What does it mean? It means that mass and energy are two sides of the same coin. They can be converted into each other. Even a tiny grain of matter holds incredible energy. This one idea helped us understand how stars burn, how nuclear energy works. All these ideas, written by a 26-year-old patent clerk, in one quiet year, changed the world forever. Einstein kept thinking and questioning, and in 1915, he introduced something even bigger, a new way to understand gravity. Before Einstein, people believed Newton's idea. Gravity is a pulling force, but Einstein saw it differently. He said, gravity isn't a pull, it's the bending of space and time caused by mass. Let's imagine it. Put a bowling ball on a soft mattress. It makes a dip. Now roll a marble nearby. It curves around the dip. That's what Einstein said the planets are doing. They move because space itself is curved. It sounded strange. Most scientists didn't believe it. Then came the test. In 1919, during a solar eclipse, astronomers saw something amazing. Starlight bent around the sun, just like Einstein predicted. Overnight, he became world famous. A scientist more famous than kings. In 1921, Einstein received the Nobel Prize in Physics, but not for relativity. He won for the photoelectric effect, the first paper from his miracle year. Why not relativity? Some scientists still didn't understand it. Others weren't ready to believe it. But Einstein didn't care. I have no special talent, he said. I am only passionately curious. After World War I, Germany was in ruins. The economy collapsed. People were desperate and afraid. In 1933, Adolf Hitler rose to power. He blamed the Jews for everything. Germany's defeat, poverty, and pain. It was a lie, but most people believe his words. And that lie turned into hate. Einstein was Jewish. He was a scientist, a pacifist, and a global symbol of freedom. His books were burned, his home was raided, so Einstein left Germany. In 1933, he resigned from all his jobs there and never returned. He fled to America, not as a hero, but as a refugee. In America, Einstein found safety, but he didn't stay silent. He spoke out against racism, against war, against injustice. He supported civil rights leaders like W.E.B. Du Bois. Racism is America's worst disease, he said. I am ashamed of it. He never worked on weapons. He never accepted power. I speak not as a citizen of one country, he said, but as a citizen of the world. In 1939, Einstein signed a letter to President Roosevelt. It warned that Nazi Germany might build a bomb. 
a bomb powered by Einstein's own equation, E equals mc squared. The letter contributed to the start of the Manhattan Project, America's secret effort to build an atomic bomb. But Einstein never worked on the bomb. And when the U.S. dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Einstein was heartbroken. He said, Had I known the Germans would not succeed, I would never have lifted a finger. It became his deepest regret. The same equation that unlocked the stars had helped destroy cities. Einstein spent the rest of his life in Princeton, New Jersey. He kept thinking, kept writing, kept dreaming. He searched for one final answer, a theory to unite everything, one law for gravity, light, and matter. He called it the unified field theory. He never finished it, but he never gave up. In 1952, Israel offered him the presidency. He said, no, I lack the experience, he said. I prefer equations over politics. On April 18, 1955, Albert Einstein died peacefully in his sleep. He was 76 years old. His brain was preserved for study. His ashes were scattered in secret. His soul belonged to the stars. He was once called slow, strange, hopeless, but he changed the world. He showed us that time can bend, that light is more than it seems that the tiniest things hold infinite power. He didn't just teach science, he taught us how to wonder, how to imagine, how to be curious. And that is the true mark of genius. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and check out more stories like this. Thanks for watching.